<laughs> Technically, we can lift a small dog with this. It, the gimbal will try to move the copter and cause oscillations, so. Come on, honey, come home. And that's that. Here with uh, Ryan McMaster, and he's got his amazing uh, Octo here. Uh, I'm going to ask you to just start explaining how you came up with this uh, setup and tell us all the features of it. So this is a microcopter-based uh, FreeFi system, Cinestar 8 Heavy Lift. Uh, we're running Tiger 4012, uh, 480 kV motors on it on 15 by 5 carbon fiber props. Um, it's running on a BL 3.5 with dual redundant flight controllers. So if one flight controller ever fails, this whole system will revert to that secondary wow. flight controller and allow us to bring it home safely. So in, in case of a, an emergency, and they do happen, it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when it happens and it will happen, um, we can bring this thing home safely. Um, we're running a pair of 10,000 milliamp 6S cells, which give us, uh, right now, we're 12 minutes in with 11,210 milliamps consumed. So we could realistically get about 16 minutes of flight out of this rig, which wow. uh, underneath, it's running a Movi M5 with a Sony A7S, and that's that. That's awesome. So this is a Grotner MC32. Okay. This is a desk style transmitter as you can see when I put my hands on it sure um, it gives me really it's just real comfortable uh, with with how much I do fly this mm -hmm. a standard style transmitter your hands you know you got to keep them kind of tighten in with this I can be really relaxed with the harness you know it's just really comfortable overall it makes everything real easy for you know anything professional but yeah, we have full telemetry on this, and this that full telemetry lets me know exactly how much the battery is gone, how much mm -hmm. of the battery is left, um, the heading from where it took off mm -hmm. from my trip. So if I'm standing like this and we're facing roughly east, the the copter will know that when I start up, I'm facing east, and it'll tell me from where I'm headed facing where the copter is off in a cardinal direction. So yeah. right now it's it's facing is 34 degrees, which is almost true north. Um, right now, the copter itself is hovering between true north and uh, 360. So, it's it, you know it just gives us a real good cool. idea of exactly where we are in space, why we're at that location in space, and then how we can you know make the best use of where we are, based off the director or the the, the uh, DP's requests for the shots that right. they need. Very cool. Now this is a two operator system. Yes. So I've got the controller here for the uh, gimbal. Yes. Uh, so do you want to explain how you've got this set up now? So the cool thing about the Movi gimbals, and this is true for the M5, the M10, and the M15 on the Spectrum transmitter, is this left stick here is actually a throttle mm -hmm. for the pan and the tilt. So that allows for real unique shots where you can be you can be cruising along and as you're doing your dolly shot, you can slow that throttle down. Mm. And you can make sure that that stop that shot stops perfectly. So you can maintain your heading without you know it, any yes, jerkiness exactly. or anything there's, like that. There's so. there's minimal jerkiness. Even a even an inexperienced operator can That's pull great. off cinema level shots. That's wonderful. So it really it really democratizes the aerial filmmaking. Before we were running sure. a, a servo gimbal, mm -hmm. and the guy, the guy that I did all my work with, bless his heart, just struggled with that thing. The second sure. we got the movie. Right. Everything changed. Wow. It's just, it's such a solid system. And then, wow. you know, we, it's, it's light. It's designed to work specifically with this copter. Mm -hmm. So it gives, it puts us at a real big advantage. Right. It's designed, this whole system is designed to work together. So we can, you know, we can pull shots off that even a helicopter can't pull off sometimes. Wow, yeah, I can imagine. And then we're shooting the Sony A7S. I can't say enough for how much I love that camera. Now, does that uh, have to be a dedicated lens for that gimbal to work, or can you make we adjustments can use and, and swap any out? lens we want with this? Really? So the cool thing about the Movies versus, say, the DJI Zenmuse okay. or any of the other fixed-style right. uh, gimbals is 
Right now we have it set up with the Sony 10 to 18, which okay. is a really good general purpose lens for, for today. Uh, it makes sense because it's light, it's real easy to use, and it's a variable zoom. So if we want to get a really nice wide shot, mm -hmm. you know, we can just land it, zoom it out right. and we're done. But the flip side to that is we can actually run this with cinema primes. Uh, we regularly run the Rokinon EF set because we have an EF adapter mm -hmm. and a whole plate system that actually locks the adapter oh, wow. and the plate and everything together. Wow. So that lens is on there. It's almost as good as positive lock. Wow. It's like a step below positive lock. Wow, that's wild. So, and the cool thing is, is we can go from a Rokinon 14 to an 85 in less than five minutes. Wow, that's fantastic. So we can- And, and you don't have to totally retune your, your gimbal the each time you do it. We do, but what okay. we do, the gimbal does need to be tuned for each individual okay. lens. But All the right. nice thing about it is in my, in my smartphone, which I don't have on me, <laughs> in my smartphone, I have all the settings saved for the Rokinon 14 mm -hmm. on the A7S, I have settings for the Blackmagic 4K with, uh, with various lenses. Um, we, we run the Blackmagic 4K and the M10 exclusively. This okay. doesn't actually have the width to get into the SDI port. Right. So, but yeah, we can run just about any wow, lens cool. and camera combination on the Movies, which that's is wonderful. very advantageous yeah. for, you know, with, with the Zenmuse gimbals for the GH4, for example, right. you're limited to, I think, the 12, the 17, and the 45, Okay. I think, are the three that you're limited to. And that really kind of limits your shot options, especially yeah, with, you know, especially with certain types of, sh uh, of shots. And you can't put any cinema grade lenses, which are right. required sometimes right, right. for certain shoots. But yeah, that's, that's, cool. that's it. Um, it's, that's fantastic. This is a great setup. I really appreciate you coming out today yeah, and, and, and happy showing to. this to us. So yeah. And it's, great. it's, uh, it's stable, it's safe, it's effective. It's piloted, uh, it's piloted by uh, myself, I'm the pilot in command. We've got a gimbal operator who's also an Emmy Award winning director. Nice. Um, He's got a good eye. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then we have two VLOS spotters who work with us. Uh, we just, you know, whoever's right. available, they right. come with us. And we use, we work as a three man team to make sure that we can get the best shots possible.